Does anybody want their life to change? You can literally rip the devil to shreds just through the power of being thankful. As we walk through each new day, we all have questions. They're just part of life. But did you know there are answers for you? God says when we look, we'll find Him. He's not trying to hide anything. So together, we are discovering life's everyday answers. One of the very first lessons we're taught as a child is to say, thank you. We even have an entire holiday set aside to remind us to be thankful. However, sometimes it's still easy to forget. And then there are those times that we frankly don't feel like there's much to be thankful for. But usually when you search deep, you'll find it. I thank God that I have a roof over my head. I thank God I have food in my stomach. Um, because there was a time when I see people, when I see people walking with shopping carts and stuff, that used to be that used to be my husband and I. We used to sleep outside. We used to sleep in sleeping bags, and we're both veterans. So I'm thankful, truly, that God has brought me this far. When we overcome those hard circumstances in our lives, like Sarah's. It's easy to recognize why we should be grateful for what we have. But it's not always quite that simple. Maybe you're still in the midst of that trial. Today, Joyce is talking about the power that's in thankfulness to help us in the midst of our problems. Here's our answer to thankful for what? I believe that what you hear tonight, if you really take it into your life and you put it to work in your everyday life, I believe it has the power to change your life. The Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness trying to make what the Bible says was an 11 day journey. Now that's really pretty dumb. But which one of us can't say been there, done that. And one of their big problems was they kept murmuring and complaining. Instead of being thankful, they complained a lot. And if we can only be thankful when we've got everything we want, then we don't even begin to know anything about having Christ-like character. Anybody, even a, even a sinner that doesn't know a thing about God can be thankful when everything's going their way. So the big thing for us is to learn how to be just as thankful when things aren't going good as we are when things are going good, because even when things are not going good in our life, we still have hope, and we know that there's nothing that God can't fix. So we don't wait till it's fixed to start being thankful. We start thanking God in the middle of our mess. We find something else in our life that is working. We find some body part that does feel okay. We find something our spouse is doing right. We find something about our job that we can endure and be happy about. Amen? There's always something to be happy about. I said there's always something. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 and 19. I got so many notes up here tonight. I'm... Thank God in everything. <laughs> in everything. So let me just stop and ask What's going on in your life that you have been murmuring about and you haven't once taken the time in that situation to say, well, God, this is happening and this is not fun and this hurts, but here's 10 things I'm thankful for. Nobody needed that, okay? (laughs) 
Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances might be, be thankful and give thanks. And this is something that I want to press tonight is the giving of thanks. I think if I said, how many of you are thankful, you'd all put your hand up. I'm thankful. But you know what I'm learning? Being thankful and giving thanks is two entirely different things. And we not only need to give thanks to God, but we need to thank people that are in our lives that are a blessing to us. Don't take people for granted. Do you know how many divorces could be eliminated if people in their homes were just using good manners within the family? Just being thankful. 76 times in the Bible it says give thanks. So be thankful and give thanks. For this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus. Even though I was abused as a child and had a very lousy start in life, never got to really be a child, don't ever remember being happy until I was in my 20s, did not ever get to have any fun, got in trouble for laughing as a child. I mean, I had a really bad beginning and I was getting nowhere as long as I was grumbling and murmuring and complaining and feeling sorry for myself and being mad at everybody who had a good life. It was only when I started finding things to be thankful for. You know what? When God asked me to start taking care of my mom and dad as they got older, I mean, I thought that was just about the most unfair thing that God could possibly ask me to do. You have got to be kidding. And this is what I said. What did they ever do for me? And you know what I heard in my spirit? You're breathing, aren't you? I mean, they had me. And so here I am, you know, didn't have a good beginning, but I'm having a good finish. And so can you. I'm thankful for a peaceful mind and a soul that's at rest and for the truth that's healed my heart. Um, I'm thankful for when I get down in the floor and I play with my kids and they're happy and they're innocent and they know what childhood is. I'm thankful for a man that loved me when there was nothing lovely in me. I'm thankful for things that I can't put a price tag on. The Lord himself and, and those three people I just met, they are my treasure. And um, that is what I'm so thankful for and the, the complete turnaround of my life, what God has redeemed and restored and made it beautiful. Melissa gets it. She's been through those really dark times, so she understands all there is to be thankful for. And Joyce does as well. And we'll get back to more of Joyce's teaching in just a moment. But first, we asked you to tell us on social media to share how being thankful helps you. So this comes from Susan from Virginia. She says, being thankful for what God has blessed me with, big and small, has helped me to have compassion for others and help those that are in need. I work as a nurse, so it can be simple, such as a hug and good news, flowers to an elderly person who has no family, and clothes for the needy. Susan's right. Sometimes it is those very small things that not only make a difference for someone else, but make a difference for you, too, to really let thankfulness take root in your lives. So what steps are you going to take today to develop a thankful attitude? Let us know. Make a decision. Write it down. Make it public. You'll have some accountability. Let us know on Facebook or on Twitter. It's not too late for you. No matter what kind of a lousy beginning you had or how lousy life is right now, you can still have a great finish. And there's more than one thing that God will lead you to do. But I am telling you, if you don't start being thankful, I mean on purpose, aggressively thankful for the things that God is doing for you. And God is doing good things for everybody, even people who don't know him. He's the, the sun shines on the wicked and the good. 
on the just and the unjust. This is the part of this I'm wanting somebody to get. I feel in my spirit that if somebody can just get this, you've had a lot of bad stuff happen to you. You've been negative. You're almost afraid to believe that good things are going to happen because you don't want to be disappointed. That's exactly where I was at. If that's your attitude, I get it. I understand. But I'm also telling you, if you want your life to change, <laughs> does anybody want their life to change? You can literally rip the devil to shreds just through the power of being thankful. Daniel, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed and gave thanks to God. And even when the law came out that if anybody doubt, bowed down to any God except the king, they were going to be put in a lion's den. He still, and I love what the Bible says, he still, as was his custom. See, that's why I'm saying maybe we just need to form some new habits. And, and maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to set an alarm and every hour stop and give thanks. Or three times a day, stop and give thanks. You know, we can form good habits, and it's amazing how the bad habits have no room to work in our life just by farming good habits. Instead of trying not to complain, why don't you just increase your gratitude and thanksgiving? And I love what it says in Daniel 6.10. Three times a day, Daniel bowed down as was his custom with his windows open. He didn't even become a sneaky grateful giver because he was afraid of the king. He knew the power of gratitude. And sure enough, he slept all night in the lion's den. Came out the next day unharmed. We have added power to our lives as we become grateful. If you want to increase the anointing on your life, be thankful. If you want to increase the anointing on your church, just encourage everybody in it to get thankful. Because gratitude adds power and complaining adds weakness to our lives. Amen? Psalm 34, the first three verses. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My life makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble and afflicted hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Who should be glad? The afflicted. <laughs> Come on, we don't want to miss that. Let the humble and the afflicted be glad. Let the afflicted be glad. <laughs> Let the mistreated be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. She was feeding me like things that I'm ready to hear. It was a fitful word and it always is. When I was in county jail, when I first started getting sober, I got a hold of one of Joyce Meyer's books, Battlefield of the Mind. And my mom always spoke about her because she's endured sexual abuse and some of the things that I went through. And I'm just grateful to be saved today. God is good to me. He saved me, he set me free, and he's healed me from my shame, and he's working on it, I'm working on it, and someday I hope to be, I will be, where he desired for me to be, where he's planned for me to be. That is our prayer for all of you. I know that some of you have much to be thankful for, and for some of you, life is pretty hard right now, but a heart of thankfulness looking for those reasons to praise God will really make a difference. Here's what someone else said on social media. This is Jen, and she says, I was under extreme stress, which caused me to become really ill. I live in a remote desert town in the middle of nowhere and have never felt so alone. I lost my job, friends, and nothing made sense. In the midst of this, I began thanking God that he raised me out of the pit I was in. I've done this every day for four months, now I have healing, restoration, and peace. 
God is so good and Jesus is all we need. Now as Joyce concludes her teaching on thankfulness, she explains how complaining can be dangerous. I could go on and on and show you a lot more scriptures about Thanksgiving, but I think I better take a little time and just chat at you for a few minutes about complaining. <laughs> oh. Well, we'll end, we'll end up in a good place. Don't get sad. All right, now. 1 Corinthians 10, 9 through 11. We should not tempt the Lord, try his patience and become a trial to him, critically appraising him and exploiting his goodness. See, God is basically saying, I am so good to you, so when you complain, you're exploiting my goodness as some of them did, and were killed by poisonous serpents. <laughs> He's talking about the Israelites when they were going through the desert. Nor should you discontentedly complain as some of them did, and they were put entirely out of way by the destroyer, which is death. 23,000 of them fell dead in one day. Serpents got into the camp through murmuring, grumbling, and complaining. Now, thank God we live in the dispensation of grace, but I don't think we're going to drop dead if we complain, but I do think that we block our blessings, at least to some degree. Thank God for his mercy and there, you know, his goodness is not based on my ability to never complain, but I think it's a principle that if we don't learn to live with a grateful heart and especially being grateful when things are not going our way and to give thanks, not only to God, but to people. I'm telling you, I think you can change the atmosphere where you work, you can change the atmosphere in your home, you can change the atmosphere in a church, perhaps in a city, perhaps even in a nation. What would happen if just the Christians got thankful? We should be the happiest people on the face of the earth because we're not going to hell. I mean, that's something to be thankful for. We're going to miss the whole brimstone and fire thing. Yeah, thank you. Amen. If you're not happy now, you'll get happy. So 23,000 of them died, and then they got a revelation. <laughs> Moses, pray for us, for we have sinned. Really? I wonder what gave you that clue. I think if nothing else, we can at least go to bed at night and ask God to forgive us for any time we complained and murmured during the day. Amen. Now, Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. And all the congregation cried out with a loud voice and they wept all night. And all the Israelites grumbled and they hated their situation. And they accused Moses and Aaron to whom the cold congregation said, we just wish we would have died in Egypt. <laughs> or that we would have died in the wilderness. See, these are the people that were begging God to get them out of bondage in Egypt. Wonder how many times we beg God to change our situation. And he doesn't take us the route that we planned. Hello. <laughs> you know, we really don't want to be transformed. We want to be translated. Some of you don't know the meaning of those two words. Okay. <laughs> to get translated means I'm here and then all of a sudden I'm there. I get to skip all the going through part. But when you're transformed, God arranges circumstances that force you to trust him. <laughs> And to stop being de independent and stubborn and bullheaded. And there's a brokenness that have to, has to take place in our life. And only God knows how to break us in the right places where we're not destroyed. He breaks our pride. He breaks our stubbornness. Come on. 
The Bible says that there was a shorter route. that God could have taken them to the promised land, but he took them the long, hard way on purpose because they were not ready for war. See, you think when you get into the promised land, when you're getting everything you want, there's going to be no more trouble from the devil? <laughs> oh, ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Hardy, hardy, ha, ha. No, every new level is a new devil. So we have to learn how to do war and how to face our enemies while we're still in the wilderness because every level of new responsibility means you're going to have new things coming against you. Now, I can tell you, most of it just don't even bother me anymore. It's just like, been there, done that, know where this is headed. <laughs> Numbers 14, verse 3. Why does the Lord bring us to this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones are going to be a prey. It'd just be better for us to return to Egypt. Then they said to one another, let us choose a captain and return to Egypt. <laughs> and there's thousands of these people. <laughs> and watch this. The response of the men who became the leaders. Now, come on, there's a message here. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the Israelites. When they heard the complaining, it grieved them so much because they understood the danger of what they were doing that they just fell down flat on their faces before God and I'm sure started praying for God to forgive them. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephthah, who were among the scouts who had searched out the land, they rent their clothes. They were so grieved that they tore their clothes. Back then, that was a sign of great grief. When somebody would die, they would rip their clothes. And so these are four men that get talked about in the Bible as being heroes. The rest of them, you never hear anything about again. I want to ask you, do you want to be talked about as a hero for God, or do you want to just get lost somewhere out in the wilderness and maybe, yes, end up in heaven, but never really do anything here that's going to count for anything? Amen. See, I know a lot of times we think we're looking for some deep, complicated answer to our intense complicated <laughs> burdens God what is wrong If you'll just shh. 
show me <laughs> what kind of hierarchy demon this is. <laughs> and God's just trying to say tonight, will you just stop complaining and be thankful? What's wrong with my life? I don't understand what's wrong with my life. God, what's wrong with my life? My lousy, stinking, terrible, miserable life that I hate. I wish I had somebody else's life, God. <laughs> now, thank you for my life, Lord. Thank you for everything that's even happened to me in my life because I trust you to work it out for good. You know what? If you're bold enough, you can even thank God for the pain that you're going through right now. You know why? Because when you're hurting, you either go under or you go over. But if you go over, you get to know God in a way that you could not possibly have known him without that pain in your life. You can have something in God that nobody can take away from you. Are you seeing that this is not just a little message on being thankful? Is anybody seeing the difference? I'm saying this can change your life and add power to you that you might not ever have otherwise. Come on, give God praise.